doing a great work. You're doing a great work. Yes. I'm sure of that, that you are doing a great work. But some of us here might say, nah, I don't, I'm not doing a great work. I'm not sure if you're doing it great. But what I'm sure of is, you have a great work. You have a great work. But what I'm not sure of, if you are doing great about that great work that you have. Yes, you may feel that you are not doing great with the great work that you have, but it's a matter of how you look at it. It's a matter of how you want to look that great work that you have. Okay? There was a story of these three brick layers. Okay? So settle down. There were these three brick layers and someone walking past on that construction site they were working. And this guy came to this first brick layer and he asked, what are you doing? I'm a brick layer. And he passed on the other brick layer and asked, what are you doing? I am making a wall. I am building a wall. The other guy, the third brick layer, he asked, what are you doing? I am doing a cathedral where God will be worshipped. Where God will express his love to his people. Where people will worship God and experience the presence of God. This is what I'm doing. The same job, the same sight, at the same time, but different perspective. What are you doing? I'm just an usher. What are you doing? I'm ushering people to their seats and trying to calm down the kids and trying to set up the chairs. What are you doing? I am ushering people inside the worship hall so that they could experience the power and the presence of God, that God will be glorified, that God will be exalted up high. Where are you from those? Are you just a brick layer? But you are doing a great work. You are doing a great work. Nehemiah, in this chapter, he was rebuilding a wall. And he said, I am doing a great work. If you studied your Old Testament, you know what I'm talking. Nehemiah rebuilt the wall. And this was his statement in chapter 6 of Nehemiah. I am doing a great work. I would like to give you a background in order for you to be reminded about your Old Testament. Of course, Nehemiah was during the time, the story happened during the time of pre-exile, exile, or post-exile. Post-exile, because Nehemiah already returning to Jerusalem in order for him to build the Jerusalem's wall, okay? There were three stages, or three batches, or three uh, groups, or returns in Jerusalem. When King Cyrus of Persia conquered the whole east and he, he became the most powerful guy or king and he asked those, Jer those Jewish people, the Israelites who were exiled in Babylon, yes, you can now go back to your place in Jerusalem, Jerusalem to build your temple. The first batch was led by Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel built the temple. All right? But for some reason, 
it didn't happen right away or it didn't finish. And God allowed the second batch through the leading of Ezra. Ezra built the teaching of the word. Zerubbabel built the temple. Ezra built the teaching of the world, the word, sorry, through sharing because Ezra was a priest. And the last batch led by Nehemiah. Because there was a temple, there was a word of God being taught in the temple, but there's no wall. And he went back to Jerusalem in order to put security in Jerusalem by building a wall in Jerusalem. So I hope that you still remember your Old Testament overview. And that's the background of our text today. And now there you go. Nehemiah came back from, si from Persia to Jerusalem for the purpose of building a wall. Okay, you get the background. So you're doing a great work. But great work attracts oppositions. This is not my first point. This is just some uh, appetizer for our points. But great works attracts opposition. In verse 1 of chapter 6, this is what it says. Now when it was reported that Sanballat, Tobiah, to Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall, and no bridge remained in it. Although, at the time, I had not set up the doors in the gates. Then Sambalet, Geshem, sent a message to me, saying, Come, let us meet together at Cheperim, in the plain of Ono, 25 kilometers or miles away from Jerusalem, but they were planning to harm me. Mm. Because there, there was Nehemiah and his group rebuilding the wall. Okay? But this Sanballat, a Moabite, Tobiah, a, Tobiah was an Ammonite, Geshem, there's an Arab trying to stop the rebuilding of the wall. Because this, was, this would be a great help for the Jewish people, for the Israelites, if they're going to have a wall around Jerusalem. And no, 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 these three guys, Sandalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, they were perennial enemies, even from the time of be, be, before exile. They were already enemies, Moabites, Am Ammonites and also Arab. They were rivals. They were enemies. And they would like to keep the wall of Jerusalem in ruins. No. They're, al they're almost completed the wall. We need to stop them. We need to stop them. They would like to keep the walls in ruin. Yes. Yes, Lord. When, you're, you're, when you have a great work in your life, attract, this would attract opposition. Let me tell you that. Because the enemy, our perennial enemy, the, so, the, 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 our enemy, the enemy of the enemies, the devil, the Satan, would like to keep the wall in your life. In ruins. The enemy doesn't want the wall in your life strong, built, fortified. He would like to see life, family, relationship in ruins. He would like to see ministries, church in ruins. He would like to see health, finances in ruins. He would like to see Family, broken. That's what the enemy wants to see. Sandala, Tobiah, Geshem. There's so many people like that in our lives. 
Praise God. It only tells me that you have a great work to do. At work, at school, community, sometimes in church, you could find Sambalat to buy and Geshem. Wow. Where you are right now is a place where God put you or permitted you. But I want you to see it as a great work from God. It depends on your perspective. It depends on how you see it. I go to the gym religiously you know, because I know it is a great work for me to be there because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I need to take care of it. Yes, I might have some fats, fatty foods during life groups, but I need to burn it. All these calories in the gym in order for me to stay strong and live and also minister to people or else I'll be there sick, dead tired always. You know what? Whatever, I don't know what you're doing right now, but look at it, see it as a great work from God. Oh, I just fell here. I, I, I think uh, it is this an accident why I'm this in this situation or job. No, no. God permitted you to be there, but I would like you to see it in a different perspective. God, the way, go, the way God sees it. I would like you to see it. It's a great work from God. As a parking marshal, kitchen team, tech team, it's just the same. What I'm doing here, it's just a matter of perspective. Okay, so we all have great works. Are we settled with that church? Tell the person next to you, I have a great work to do. Come on. Or you could rephrase it, I am doing a great work. I am doing a great work. And great work needs focus. First point of the day. For our great works, we need to focus. Focused. Okay. And we are so poor in focus. Nehemiah 6, 3 to 7. Let's continue reading, church. This is going to be exciting. Okay, bear with me, bear with me. So I sent messengers to them saying, because well, the previous verses, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem sent a message to Sanballat saying, come on, talk to us and let us meet in honor 25 to 30 meters, uh, miles away from Jerusalem. Oh, they're trying to get to Nehemiah from the site, from the construction site. I am doing a great work. This is his reply. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. And why should the work while I live? What I should, why should the work stop while I live it and come down to you? I am doing a great work. I am focused. I know that you're going to harm me. I know that you're going to cause trouble in my life. But let me tell you this. I am doing a great work. What I'm doing is more important, far important on what I'm going to do with you. They sent messages. How many times? Four times. If only text messaging was invented during that time, I believe Nehemiah could have Received tons of messages, text messages, tweet, Instagram, email, messenger from Sandala, Tobiah, and Geshem in order for him to be distracted. In verse 6, uh -oh, verse 5, then Sanbalat sent his servant to me in the same manner, fifth time. My goodness, really? This group of people really would do everything just to distract Nehemiah on the fifth time with an open letter, unsealed letter. They sent a letter to Nehemiah. Take note, unsealed open letter. Why? Why would a person send an open letter? During the time, they still have this seal. They have this sign it. They don't want letters actually should be sealed. 
But this Sandalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, they want an open letter being sent to Nehemiah so that people will see it. And they're trying, really trying to steal the people. What, San, what Nehemiah and his people were doing. Imagine. And verse 6, and it was written. It is reported. This is what the letter says from Sanballat. It is reported among the nations and Gashmu says that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. Therefore, you are rebuilding the wall and you are to be their king. According to these reports, you have also appointed prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem concerning you. And king of Judah. So that's a lie. In the, and now, it will be reported to the king. Who's the king? King Cyrus of Persia. Because they were the subjects of King Persia, of King Cyrus of Persia. Even Sanbalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, they were governors. They were governors of the Persian Empire. The cities, the other nations of Ammonites, Moabites, and Arab. They were governors trying to distract and stop the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem. Okay? So come now. Come now. Let us take counsel together. So are you following the story, church? So this is like a very dramatic scene that we could really put ourselves into and experience and feel what's, what's going on in the story. Your work for God, church, for your family and for yourself, it is a calling. It is a great work. Greeting people at the door is not just something to make yourself feel satisfied and fulfilled. Oh, finally, I greeted a person at the door and now I'm satisfied, I'm fulfilled. It feels good to do that. No. If you're doing that, for that, for that, if you're doing that solely for that reason, what if no one would appreciate you? What if no one would give you a smile when you shake their hands coming to that door. Then, you don't want to come to church. You no longer want to be an usher or host or sing a song here because no one appreciates you. Your great work is not just to play the instrument here, to feel great or good about yourself or to receive applause from man, but you're setting a place where people could just Really experience the presence of God and worship God through your playing, through your hands be, uh, standing to them, through the lights that you are trying to mix, through the sound system that you are trying to mix, through the coffee that you are preparing for the guests. Your work is big, that you don't have time for petty things going to the honor. You need to focus. Going to honor could hurt you. You could be distracted. Your work is too big. You don't have time for all those things. Things that can slow you down. In order for you to fulfill the great work that you are doing right now, the enemy will send you all, the, all kind of messages, all text messages. I'm not saying literal message. The enemy could put in your mind that you are weak, that you can do it, you can you can do anything more than that. That you don't have any resources. People don't believe in you. You are sickly. You are ill-equipped. Those are the messages of Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. You've been like that. And I know what you did last week. Hmm. I know what you did last month. And now you're praising God. You're serving God. You're raising, raising your hand there while I knew what you did last summer. If I were you, I would block those people from my life. Those who are sending messages to distract me. Who are your Sanbalat? Who are your Tobias? Who are your Geshen in life? Come on, block them. They don't have anything to do with your life. They're just distracting you. 
You are doing great thing. Don't be distracted. Focus. If games on your on your on your gadget can distract you, can defocus you, come on, get rid of it. If nonsense party can distract you, can lose you focus on your great work, come on, get rid of it. If there are friends in your life can distract you, can make you, can mislead you, come on. We have so many things to do. We have a great work for our families, for our job, for our ministry. We have to focus, focus with the, those petty things. Come on. If you, yes, you don't want the worship leader. You don't want the song that Justin chose this morning. Come on. Those just are petty things. I don't want to come back to the church. I don't want what Justin sang this morning. Come on. Those just petty things. Look at, focus on the big things. Focus on the big picture. Come on. I don't want how Pastor June speaks. He's just always shouting and always making, I don't know. Come on, there's a pair of things. Look at the big picture. We are advancing the kingdom of God. We are advancing the word of God here in this community. Come on. Perhaps there's, there are things you don't want me doing. Oh, let God deal with me. And come on, let's just focus and advance the gospel of Christ. Those are just petty, small things. Don't be distracted with that. Focus. Focus, focus, sister. You are doing a great job. Focus, focus. Host team, focus, focus. I don't know where you're, what you're doing there. Just focus, focus. Tech team, focus. Let's focus. Let's focus together. We are going to do great things for the Lord. Sandalat, Tobiah, Geshem. I am blocking you right now. Hmm. This is so great. This work that we are doing is a great work. Therefore, it needs firmness. Let's continue reading what happened in verse 8 and 9. Then I sent a message to him saying, Such things as you, because he was being accused of wanting to be a king and would like to rebel against the Persian king. And this is what he said. Such things as you are saying, have not been done. In other translation says, what you're saying is not true, or there's not truth in what you are saying in other translation. Such things that you are saying have not been done, but you are inventing them in your own mind. That's the response of Nehemiah to Sanballat. For all of them were trying to frighten us, thinking they will become discouraged and with the work and it will not be done. But now, oh God, strengthen my hands. You need to be firm when you're doing a great work. We are all doing a great work. In the church, in our family, at work, in school, we are doing a great work. And the enemy is all geared to stop you from fulfilling that great work that you're doing at this moment. But do not be distracted by the truth, by the lies. Be firm what you've heard from the Lord. That's lies from the enemy. But the truth is, Nehemiah heard a word from God that he needed to build the wall. And that's the truth. And the word of God, the truth about God, that would help you to be firm on what you are doing in order for you to fulfill what God started in you to do and fulfill the purpose that you have in your life for that great purpose. He started a good work with Nehemiah back in Citadel of Susa in Persia, going back to Jerusalem. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. God started a good work in Nehemiah back in the site of the Lopsusa in Persia. That's the truth. 
And that made Nehemiah firm in doing what he is doing. He, the great things that he is doing. You're doing a great work right now. Let me tell you. Don't underestimate what you're doing right now for the Lord, for your family, for your workplace. It's a matter of your perspective. It's a matter how you see it. I told Joe when we are shopping at the, uh, the other day at Countdown, I told Joe, Joe, focus, focus, focus. Because you're, you're getting so many things now. <laughs> focus, focus on what you need to buy. Focus on what you need to buy. Focus, focus, focus in everything. Come on. We can do everything for the glory of God, whether you eat, whether you drink. Do it for the glory of God. Focus, focus, focus on whatever you are doing in your life. And if you focus, that's a great thing that comes from God. Church, you can, be a, you can do great things on what you are doing for the Lord. And do not be distracted by the lies of the enemy. You need to be firm in the word of God. You need to be firm with the word of God. In 1907, University of Bern turned down a PhD dissertation from a young physics student. Who is this physics student? He was Albert Einstein. He was rejected. He was declined. His thesis was declined. But he refused to give up. And he stood firm. And he changed the scientific things of this world. And there was a guy, 16 years old student, got this report card from his rhetoric teacher in school. And there was a note attached that read, a conspicuous lack of success. Your work? Just, his teacher said, lack, death, nothing in it. But he refused to, be, to give up. And he was firm. He stood firm on his conviction. And he was Winston Churchill. I know you live, you know him. Refuse to believe with the lies of the enemy. And have this conviction with the word of God that you receive from the Lord. We should be more passionate and zealous with those people because we have a word from God that would convict us that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us. The Holy Spirit will guide us and to know more about the Word of God. We should be zealous. We should be more than Winston Churchill. We should be more zealous than, than Albert Einstein's. Because you need to be firm. Because our conviction comes from the Spirit that is in us. Saldi, 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 do it, you can do it, Saldi. Be solid, be steady, be resolute, be adamant, be resolved, stand firm. You need to be firm. Do not let the enemy move you. Stand firm. I'm not going to be moved. That's the Himaya. And then that's what said God, strengthen. My hands. Where does your help come from? From God. That will make you firm. Third point. By the way, there's a bonus today. I've got four points. Great work needs courage. First, because you are doing a great work, you need to focus. Focus, focus. Right now, I know I'm now preaching 20 minutes. I need your focus. Focus, focus. Don't focus on what's going to happen later on or what you're going to eat tonight or what you're going to do after dinner. Focus, focus, focus. And we need to be firm. We need to be firm. And you need courage. You need courage. And this is what it says in verse 10 to 11. When I enter the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, son of Mehitabel, who was confined at home, who's the Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, he said, let us meet together in the house of God, God within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple. They are coming to kill you, and they're coming to kill you at night. But I said, should a man like me flee? And could one such as I go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Shemaiah, son of Deliah, was a prophet 
trying to deceive Nehemiah. Even the supposedly godly person, godly man, paid by Sanbalat, Tobias, and Geshem, wanting to deceive Nehemiah. Come on. This is what the prophet said, the false prophet. Let us meet in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple. You know what hap- what's going to happen if Nehemiah would go inside the temple. You know what's going to happen to him? He would sin because he's not a priest. He's a governor. Only priests could enter the temple. So he would sin. And by disobeying God, by stopping the work because of his fear, he would be sinning from God. If you would disobey God because of your fear, then you're sinning. And they're coming to kill you at night. Should a man like me flee? (laughs) I would like to use a different tone from Nehemiah. Should a man like me flee? I will not go in. I will not stop the work of God. That's such a strong statement that gives me a picture of a courage, of a courageous person. Because he's firm, he's focused. That's why it gives him courage to do things. This time a prophet, he could have been deceived because this is a prophet. Nehemiah was already resolved. He was resolute. He's adamant of what he's about to do. He would complete the temple. Sorry, the wall. That gave him the courage. I will not go in. I will not go in. Church, don't go in. Don't go into that transaction. Don't go into that business. Don't go into that relationship. If you think God is not leading you to do that, don't go in. Don't go in because someone tells you, because Pastor Jun said, come on, do this ministry. The first, the last, the first and last say in your life is God, not Pastor Jun, not your life group leader, not your friend, not your mom or your dad. Yes, you listen to them for advice, for counsel, but the last word and the final word in your life should be God. God, do not go in. Should a man like me, a child of God, conqueror, flee? I'm a child of God. I am conqueror. I am victorious. Should a man like me, a child of God, flee? Stop the word of God? No way. No way. I am a child of God. I am courageous. I have God with me to fight my battle. Like a young David, didn't flee from Goliath. You may see yourself like now at David's young man, small, skinny, looking boy. He didn't flee against Goliath, for he knew what he has in his life. He fought Goliath not with his spears and javelin, but he fought Goliath with the God that he has in his life. The same way, the same person, the same God who helped David to fight and kill his Goliath is the same God that I have right now to face and kill my own Goliath in life, my Sandalat, my Tobiah, and my Geshem. Last point. Great work needs wisdom. You need wisdom. If you're doing a great work, you need wisdom. And the last point that we had, the prophet, the false prophet came. Uh, Nehemiah went to this prophet, but this prophet was trying to deceive him. 
The first phrase of verse 12 says, Then, Nehemiah was speaking, Then I perceive that surely God has not sent, had not sent him. He knew. He was wise enough to discern, to read between the lines what this false prophet was trying to, to tell him. I perceive that surely God, this word is not coming from God. But he uttered his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanbalat hired him. He was hired for the reason, for this reason. Listen to these two reasons. Listen to these reasons very, very carefully. This could be the tactics that the enemy would try to stop you from doing a great work. For the reason that I may become frightened if you start to become afraid. That's the time you would lose your focus, your firmness, and your courage, and you can no longer think wisely. Try to be frightened by anything in this world. You can you can longer think the way you think when you are sober. If you are afraid with the ghost, if you are afraid with the cockroach, insect, spider, see, ah! suddenly you lose all your 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 proper thinking. You can no longer think properly. If that person in your if that person in your workplace or school or in your life group frightens you, your decision making would be affected. So that's why, in order for Sanbalat to buy, stop the work, they would frighten. Nehemiah, but Nehemiah was wise. They're trying to frighten me. Are they trying to frighten you? These people? Are they trying to frighten you at school? Come on, be wise. Be wise. You can do better than that. Second, that I might become frightened and act accordingly and sin. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you committed sin, that's the time you would really lose your focus. You would really lose your wise counsel. You can no longer think properly for your family, for your children, for your own self, for your church, for your ministry. I give up. I don't want to continue building that great wall. I stop. I give up because I sin. Because when you're sin, you can, you're, there's so much conviction in you. You don't want to go on. You don't want to continue. But Nehemiah, hmm, I'm wise. I could sense that you're trying to lead me. You want me to sin. And the enemy wants you to commit a sin. Internally, externally, there are so many things that God, the enemy would throw upon you in order for you to commit sin. Are you wise enough to discern those people or things or movies or games or parties that you attend that if you, you think you attend or you would do this, you would sin? I know you're wise enough to do that. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, you would know that you are, I am going to sin in this situation. I am going to sin in this party. I am going to sin in this conversation or meeting I'd not I'd rather not to go I'd rather stay why I'm going to leave great work verse 14 remember oh my god Tobiah and Sanbalat according to these works of theirs and also Noadiah the prophetess and the rest of the prophets who were trying to frighten me that's the way to fight the enemy, church. If they're trying to frighten you, if they're trying to pin you down, this is the suggestion that I could give you. It worked in my life 
for more than 20 years in order for you to win your battles again to buy a Sanbalat and Geshem. Verse 14. Lord, remember these people who's trying to deceive me, stop me, destroy me. Offer it to God. Don't fight your battle with, with your own self. You cannot do it. Nehemiah was fighting other nations. They're just a small group of people in Jerusalem. It was against Ammonites, Moabites, established people. Remember, they, were just, they just came from exile. They're just starting. And these people, they were already established, trying to stop him. You cannot win your battle. Remember these people, oh God, on your knees. Pray for that person. Pray for the situation to change. God is going to move. I am telling you, if God won't move, he's a liar. He's not worthy of our praise. But because he said, God will never change. I will not change. I'm not a liar. JC, your time is up. Great work needs wisdom. Hmm. You're doing a great work, JC. You need to be wise, church, in doing a great work, or else the enemy, or even your situation, or your success, or even your own comfort will lead you astray. Wise person knows how to fight this battle. He offers his concern to God according to Nehemiah. And this is the last point. This is not my last point. This is just a conclusion. Great work is a work of God that glorifies him. What you're doing is great. It is God's work. And if it's God's work, it will glorify Him. So the wall was completed on the 25th of the month of Elul in 52 days. It was completed. If you're going to read your Nehemiah 3, they started rebuilding the wall, but still to no avail. There's so many oppositions around, and yet they completed the wall for 52 days. But you, may, you might ask right now, church, listen to this very carefully. You might ask right now, why only now the wall has been rebuilt? It's been already nearly 100 years when they came back from Persia. The first batch was Zerubbabel. Then after 70 years, Ezra. And nearly 100 years or 100 years, Nehemiah came back. Why was only now the wall was being rebuilt? You, can you ask that? Can, can, have you come to that question in your life? Why only nine now? It wasn't that no one saw the problem. They were there already. They know if you are an ancient person, you know that the wall is very important for you. But after 100 years, why no one there? to stand and build a temple. It wasn't that no one saw the problem or it wasn't that the walls were not wanted by these people. They want it because it's their security. Many people saw broken walls when they're walking, going to the temple, reading the word of God. They knew that the walls were broken. They knew the need. They knew. They knew. They knew it. 
they knew what the wall, the broken wall did. Harm to the people of Jerusalem. They knew that. But no one, no one, no one got past the place just by wishing that Jerusalem had walls. They're just wishing they didn't get that place. They didn't get past that place or feeling of just wishing wishing that we have a wall. No one, no one, no one got past that place. But finally, church, after 100 years, finally there came a man in the person of Nehemiah. He did more than wishing. He did more than wishing that Jerusalem had walls. But he ached. He prayed. He fought. He stood firm. He fight for it. I am going to rebuild this wall. There was a need. And I'm going to ask the king. And I am going to fight for my people by having a wall. What are you wishing right now, church? What do you wish that you should have in your family in this church? What are you wishing right now? Don't stay just wishing. Come on, fight for it. Fight for your family. Fight for your children. Fight for that relationship. Fight for that ministry. Fight for those people whom you love. Fight for God. Fight for Him. Come on church, what are you wishing right now? When would you stop wishing and act on something that God wants you to do? You're doing a great work. Do not underestimate what you're doing. Come on, set up crew team. We hope that we have a crew we're set up. We wish that we have people who would really come. Yeah, thank you so much, Matthew, for volunteering there always every Sunday. That we really have a team. Not only that, I know in your family, you wish that your child is like this, your husband is like this, your wife is like this, your workplace, I wish it like that. I wish that my my, my workmates would know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. When are you going to stop wish and be a man like Nehemiah who would stand, who would say, I'm going to fight for this. I'm going to rebuild this temple for my God, for my people. Nehemiah planned, he prayed, he fought, he encouraged, he stood strong, he saw the job through the completion. But he also had people around him with the same kind of heart. We are doing great in this community. We will keep doing this church as a body of Christ, as a faith community. This is not just a one-man job. This is a job that God entrusted to us. Yes, there would be oppositions. They're just Sanbalat, Tobias, and Gijem. All they can do is they didn't even come to Nehemiah and face Nehemiah and kill him or hurt him. They're just good at this. The enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy, the devil, roaring. It's the only thing. That's, they're good at that. 
they're just like that. They cannot hurt you as long as you're doing the great work of God. Your classmates trying to bully you, your friends, your workmates, they're just like that. No, but you're doing a great work. You're doing a great work. 52 days, it was completed. But you know what? How many months of preparation Nehemiah before responding to the call of God? Remember 52 days, he completed the wall. Listen to this. When Nehemiah, when he was a cupbearer in Persia, he heard this from his brother who visited him to Persia while serving the king. It was the time of Kislev. That's December. He was visited by a brother and then our wall is still broken down, broken down. And then when Nehemiah heard that wall was broken, he wept, he fasted and prayed. He prepared himself for the rebuilding of the wall. And the next part in Nehemiah 2, it was a time of Nisan. March, December, January, February, March of prayer. Preparation. Four months of preparation. Four months of prayer compared to the actual work of 52 days. Nothing can our prayer cannot do. He prayer can move mountain. Prayer can do things. Are you planning to do something? Come on, prepare in prayer. Pray, 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 pray. That's the key to success, church. Pray, 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 pray. Four months of prayer before starting to talk to the king. King, I am going back to Jerusalem. I am going to rebuild the temple. Okay, what do you need? I'm going to give you money. I'm going to give you timber. I'm going to give you letter. I'm going to give you all your resources that you need in order for you to build the wall for your temple in Jerusalem. Thank you, Jesus. Church, you're doing a great work. You need to focus. Focus, 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 focus. You need to be firm, 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 firm. You need to take courage, 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 courage. And because it's so it's so great you need wise you need to be wise.